Hey guys, that would give me back here for the video, guys. Welcome back to an episode of my daily sniping series. Guys, go ahead and get right into it. Starting off right away, we'll be talking about what to expect from the market day one of Mutt 23. What can we expect? Is it going to be crazy market or is it going to be a kind of tame market? Let's go ahead and talk about it. So starting off right away, we have different categories of price tags depending on the player. So for example, Legends will be the most expensive players on the auction house day one. They are usually 90 to 92 overall players. So therefore overalls obviously like always trump every single thing. Uh, but also it's usually harder to get the Legends completed, especially with the sets. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and talk about non-legend players because every single legend player will be around 350 to 400,000 coins and even more than that, depending on the player. I mean, if we get like a fullback, we probably will be less than that, but it's day one. He is probably not going to give us a fullback day one. They're probably going to give us a quarterback, a wide receiver. I'm going to guess a corner, probably a D tackle and probably like a left us out linebacker or something. They're probably not going to give us a fullback. With that being said, though, one of the most expensive non-legend players in the game day one is going to be Legarius Sneed. He comes in at 86 speed. Oh, sorry. Oh, 88 speed, 86 acceleration, 86 uh, awareness, 90 jumping, 86 play rec, 89 man, 84 zone, 86 press. Because of the fact that at this moment in time, we know what well, we think we know it's not 100 confirmed but tyreek hill is quote unquote the fastest receiver in mutt at 87 speed which means legerius need is the only guy that can actually cover him one-on-one -on -one without any hassle at all therefore he's gonna be the most expensive cornerback in the game day one all right so most likely legerius need Got to keep in mind, there will be a set to complete to go ahead and get him. And the bundles will probably help you get him even easier. I'm going to say his price tag is around three to 350,000 coins day one. Uh, that will come down over time, especially depending on what the bundle toppers end up being. My guess is over the first you know month, month and a half, we'll see a crap ton of headliner bundles come out. And they will probably slowly, you know, just think down his uh, price of his card slowly but surely. So we should see the price of his card come down a little bit. Number two most expensive player is, other than the rookie premier players, is going to be Tyreek Hill. 87 speed Tyreek Hill is going to be absolutely insanity. And because there's no power-ups this year, his price tag is just going to be through the roof because it's not like you can get his, you know, like his power up and power him up and go ahead and just work with a boo boo uh, Tyree kill. You got to go with a full Tyree kill or nothing. And again, like I said before, his odds will probably be not the greatest to pull. So my guess would be he'll probably be around 200,000 coins, uh, especially day one, because day one, everyone's opening up packs. Everyone's going crazy on the a market. Everyone's trying to sell everything humanly possible. Uh, day one and Mutt, they always boost the odds because, you know, they want little Johnny who just got on Madden for the first time ever and opened up a $20 bundle to pull something crazy day one and never pull anything good the rest of the year. So odds are always boosted day one. So... <laughs> Even like 88 overall base elite cards are going to be in a price tag range of 1 to 140,000 coins. Because again, like I said, day one is just how we just how the market is going to shift. So for example, if we go ahead and take a look at last year, this is for Devontae Adams, the best receiver in Madden last year. He started out day one at around 114,000 coins. And then by the middle of September, he was 148,000 goes to show you how boosted the odds are day one and then as time goes on his price tag skyrocketed so again depending on that and again you know last year it's a little bit of an outlier because of the fact that we did have power-ups so if a guy got a brand new car for example if Devonte got a brand new team in a week card right then instantly his card could have gone up in price too but just keep in mind day one price tags will be not low, but lower than they might be in a, a week or so. All right, so let's talk about that. So Tyreek Hill, yes, 200,000 coins. He's Tyreek Hill. He has all speed on him. He's going to be in that price tag range. The rest of the 88 overall cards, and if we go ahead and look at um, 
let me actually pull up on Mutthead here. Not Mutthead, on EA's actual thing here. Because they do have the top 10 base elites. Again, we don't have all the cards revealed yet. But we have some of them. And these are the base elites. So, for example, like players like Aaron Donald, for example. He's going to be probably in 175 200,000 coins just because again he is going to be one of the premier pass rushers day one Jalen Ramsey would probably be around 200,000 coins Miles Garrett 200,000 coins TJ Watt 200,000 coins uh Derek Henry probably like 175 200,000 coins and it will probably slowly drop off from there so like uh Bayard would probably be like 150 and then probably across the board here probably 150 across the board so again, like I said, we're going to see anywhere from 88 overalls from probably 150 to 200,000 coins. Now, keep in mind that training does keep price tags up, uh, keep the price of certain cards and certain overalls. Uh, if there was no training, prices of cards would be a lot less. But because of training and how you know hard it is to get training early in MUT, uh, that's why, again, if you look at these, that's why that's the that concept always remains of this is going to stay over a certain price tag range because of that now of course it's also harder to pull these cards than to pull a gold card or a low overall base elite card but day one these cards will still be on the market probably in that 150 to 1000 coin range which day one is hard to go ahead and build yourself a super team when each card is 200,000 coins <laughs> let's be honest i mean even right now if you go ahead and try to build a super team and let's say you have a million coins i mean that's five cards so not easy not easy to do nonetheless though that's for the base elites now for rookie premier players there are 32 rookie premier players in madden 23 okay so this is the first year we actually have a crap ton of rookie premier players in mutt 23 and all of these players can eventually be auctionable and tradable now the market for these players is going to be interesting the reason why is because you know, it's not really just based on, okay, here are the 10 players, and these 10 players have stupid stats. Like, you know, uh, Jamar Chase has really good speed, or, you know, this guy has really good speed, this guy has whatever. There are so many players who have very similar, if not, you know, really good stats in certain categories. And I actually made a video ranking these players, put them in different tier lists, because there's at least nine players I put in the S tier. There's like seven players I put in the A tier and like five I put in the B tier. That alone is half the players that you could easily choose and probably sell for a good amount of coins. Now, you know, depending on the player would depend on the price tag, of course. Uh, but you got to keep in mind, it's, again, like I said, it's not just based on, you know, completing this set and then putting the card up everyone oh, for the most part now it's especially how madden is starting to shift into is steam teams and at the end of the day the only way you're going to get all any of these players is by going ahead and completing the rookie premiere set and put posting it up so you have to buy the card off the auction house or you have to complete the rookie premiere set so for example you know even if there's like six million people doing this doing rookie premiere sets well it doesn't really matter because if you know, only 100,000 select Jordan Davis here as their player for the rookie premier player, uh, auction one tradable, because again, keep in mind, the NAT version, you can't sell, you can't buy. So we're going to see a crap ton of my man Danny Gray right now on the auction house day one next year on uh, a crap ton of a couple of these other guys, but not all 32 will probably be posted on the auction house. So definitely will say the price tags of these cards will vary and these cards might be stupid price tag wise because if you want to create a theme team day one, you're going to need these players, right? So certain, certain versions of these players might actually be really expensive. Like for example, Sauce Gardner, uh, not Sauce Gardner. All right, wait, they didn't choose Sauce Gardner for, okay. I mean, I, it's whatever. Anyway, though, um, but certain these players, like, for example, Thornton, I believe, he has, like, 84 speed. He probably won't be, there won't be much of him on the auction house. Because why would you go with him when you can go with 86 speed? And if you're a Patriots fan, you're probably just going to keep him NAT. So, keep that in mind. Some of these rookie premier players, there might not be really a set market for them. There might be a rookie premier card up for 600,000 coins. You might be like, whoa, how, oh, what? 
because it only might be six of Thornton on the whole entire Madden 23. When you have 10 players, you're splitting up over like 3 million people doing this. Then it's easier to see a lot of players on the auction house. But you got 32 and you got to think maybe half of Madden players might not even return to Madden 23. It really divvy up and certain players will not be chosen. Like I'm going to tell you right now, I love Ling Linderbaum. He's our first round draft pick for the Ravens, but not many people are going to be trying to get his card and sell it on the auction house. So keep that in mind. Nonetheless, though, that's kind of how the market will look day one. Again, like I said, it's going to be an interesting market, uh, but I don't. I think it's going to be. It's going to be different. The reason why it's mainly going to be different is power ups. No power ups is going to be crazy. Because in the past, you know, we had power ups that kind of controlled. Like, okay, if this is a really expensive card. Well, his power ups can be really expensive and his actual card might not be as expensive because of that reason. Well, now with power ups, it completely flips the whole ball game on top itself. Now, because of power ups, that isn't always the case. You know, it could be completely different now because power ups, uh, no power ups. Now that card is the only version you can get in that card before you could get like a boo boo version and upgrade. You can't do that anymore. So go me interesting. So with that being said, um, like I said, 88, probably 150, 200,000 coins. Uh, 87 is probably 100 to 150. 86 is most likely 50 to 75K. And then so on and so on. So you go down the list there, you know, 85 is probably 40, 45K. And then go down the list. Now, first couple promos we will be getting in Mutt. We'll go ahead and bring down the price tag of some of these cards. So, for example, Team of the Week. Um, we'll go ahead and bring down the price tag of a lot of base elites because that does go ahead and add and fluctuates more cards into the market, which of course brings down every single player that's position. Other than the top players like Aaron Donald, if you we get a brand, if we let's say for example, we get a new Aaron Donald card in the game. Let's say team of the week, week one, we get a 90 overall Aaron Donald. Well, that basically Aaron Donald is going to go down in price, and everything below that position is going to go down in price. So it's going to get a little crazy. Now, we'll probably get ultimate kickoff promo uh, the first week of the uh, first month of Madden. Ultimate kickoff and team of the week. Those are kind of usually guarantees with legends being sprinkled in. And they might even throw another promo in there in September. So, again, like I said, this market is going to shift fast. But day one is why I'm telling you guys a million times. Sell, 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 sell everything. Create a budget squad and really formulate a budget squad. Do not focus on do not focus on creating this God squad because this market is going to shift. It's going to shift very, very quickly. Because there's no more power-ups, now we're not focusing on, you know, spending all this training and coins to, to players. There's gonna be a lot more people selling their teams. Without power-ups and without, you know, any kind of physical cams and stuff like that. Because before it was like, oh, well, I don't want to, you know, sell my team because I got to power down my player. I got to remove his physical chems. Now, because the strategy card items and because there is that, we're not going to see that as often as before. So keep that in mind. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment down below. See you guys in the next one. Peace.